Its parallel in the book of Revelation is when the bottomless pit is opened and Apollo and his hordes of locusts ascend from the abyss and come to earth. In Revelation chapter 9 verse 1 we read, And I saw a star fall from heaven to the earth, and he was given the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit. He opened the shaft of the bottomless pit, and from the shaft rose smoke like the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened with the smoke of the shaft. Then from the smoke came locusts on the earth and they were given power like the power of scorpions of the earth, and they were told not to harm the grass of the earth, or any green thing that growth, or any tree. In movies like The Day the Earth Stood Still, you have a horde of insects who go about devouring all that is man-made while leaving every green thing untouched. This is Azekthoth and his horde. Nyarlathotep was created as the messenger of the Ancient Ones, he is said to be a go-between for humans and the Abyss's most foul gods. He is described as a shapeshifter with unspeakable darkness in his heart and countless faces. His most common nicknames are Lord of the Wood and the Creeping Chaos. For those of you who have seen Hollywood Insider's full disclosure, you're familiar with the Joker character Osmodeus and his role as the go-between. Repeatedly, Nyarlathotep is associated with chaos. This is, I suspect, Nyarlathotep upset the established order and everything becomes chaos i'm an agent of chaos oh and you know the thing about chaos it's fair next we have kingu the military commander of the demonic hordes humans are said to have been made from his blood and from this comes the hole in man's heart humanity's rebellious demonic nature it is due to humanity's demonic bloodline that we may wield authority over the demonic forces that lay outside. Marduk is said to have done this on purpose so that the covenant between demons and humans would be sealed forever. Now the demons must answer to the one race they hate most, humans. Tiamat is said to have been fighting the Elder Lords for ages and spawned a multitude of creatures for her army. She is the goddess of the primeval depths and also that after being defeated by Marduk, she was torn into two pieces. These two pieces would form the universe we know. Tiamat has many servants among mankind. And finally, we have Ereshkigal. Ereshkigal seems to be another name for Tiamat. In either case, Ereshkigal is called the Queen of the Underworld, Queen of the Dead, and Queen of the Outside. She once imprisoned Inanna in the Underworld, but was freed by Ea. She has many servants and even an army. As for the good gods, First we have Inanna, aka Columbia, Diana, Queen of Heaven, Mistress of the Gods, Venus, and Ishtar. Although Alhazred speaks of Inanna in a mostly positive light, her character attributes associate her with the Whore of Babylon. Inanna is said to be the guardian of the Third Gate. It is said that she descended into the underworld and conquered its denizens. Once her gate is passed, you may use her abilities even while in other spheres. Anu is one of the Elder Lords who first went to war against the Old Ones and sealed them beyond the gates. He is also one of the first three Great Watchers, called the Father of Heaven. As stated earlier, Ea's name is chanted in almost all of the ritual incantations. He is, along with Anu and Enlil, among the three Great Elder Lords and the original Watchers. Ea is also known as Anki, and the Father of Marduk, and handed down to humans the method by which to exorcise and banish demons. Anu, Ea, and another great watcher, Enlil, may be summoned and invoked in a fashion similar to the other demons. Marduk is the son of Enki and reminds you of a chosen one. Marduk led the fight against the Ancient Ones and defeated Ereshkigal. Marduk is a guardian of the Sixth Gate and, like Inanna, can be evoked to protect you against any antagonistic entity. But Alhazred warns that summoning Marduk is a great responsibility and to do so flippantly may be dangerous because the priest stands to offend Marduk. Marduk is responsible for sealing the magical contract with the demons by using Kingu's blood to form man. Marduk is said to have spawned a race of his own here on earth. Shamash is the sun god and guardian of the fourth gate. He, like the rest of the rulers of the spheres, has forged a covenant with man and can be invoked. And lastly, you have the evil seven. Alhazred, like the Hebrew traditions, suggests that there are seven main demons who act as workers of darkness in our world. They are neither male or female and are extremely inhumane. It is said that they stretch themselves out like chains and are ministers for Tiamat. 
They are referred to as the Seven Anunnaki, extremely powerful in magic and incessantly make trouble for mankind. First and oldest of the races are the Elders, also called the Elder Lords or the Elder Things. These beings perceive the existence of the Old Ones. This group has made a pact with mankind so that we may call upon their assistance with magic. This group is ruled by three gods, Enki, Enlil, and Anu, who would later spawn a race called the Watchers. This group of gods lives, according to the Necronomicon, remotely in the heavens. It was members of the Elder Race that tracked the Ancient Ones in the bottomless pit. Then there's the Old Ones, referred to as the Ancient Ones or those from outside. These beings are demons to Christians and jinn to Muslims. This race too, because of the blood of Kingu, is subject to the will of man, granted the proper sacrifice and ritual has been performed. The old ones were created and came to earth long before the creation of man. During this time, the Necronomicon points out, they filled the earth with corruption. They erected great cities at earth's poles. Their children, the Nephilim, began to cover the earth. They were worshipped like gods, and when the Elder Lords looked down from heaven and seeing the corruption, they set their seal against the Ancient Ones and cast them into the bottomless pit. Wantonly, the Old Ones trod the ways of darkness, and their blasphemies were great upon the earth. All creation bowed beneath their might and knew them for their wickedness, and the Elder Lords opened their eyes and beheld the abominations of those that ravaged the earth. In their wrath, they set their hand against the Old Ones, staying them in the midst of their iniquity, and casting them forth from the earth to the void beyond the plains where chaos reigns and form abideth not. And the Elder Lords set their seal upon the gateway, and the power of the Old Ones prevailed not against its might. It is said that their very sight is a blasphemy to the senses, because they come from a crooked world where the shape of space is so warped that the very sight is painful to the eye. But the sight of the Ancient Ones is a blasphemy to the ordinary senses of a man. For that come from a world that is not straight, but crooked, and their existence is of forms unnatural and painful to the eye and to the mind. Today, the old ones still wait in the bottomless pit, waiting for a celestial event. This celestial event doesn't necessarily have to be one that happens in our heavens. Maybe, perhaps, this is one of merging, of eminent collision of our universe and another. The conflict between the Elder Lords and the Ancient Ones sounds precisely like the story of Ancient Atlantis versus Lemuria. Both were nearly destroyed in the conflict, and the Elder Gods were quite weakened. The demons are constantly treading about, looking for open gates because they long entrance into our world. Alhazred claims that the dead can be summoned at almost any time, and unlike some of the stronger demons, may be willing to cooperate. Then there are the Maskin. These are the Hunters of Souls. They apparently drag away the soul after someone dies. They are led by their queen, Ereshkigal. The picture Abdul al-Hazred paints of spirits and demons is very similar to the version painted by Islam. The Muslims call these demons jinn, which is where the word genie comes from. The Muslims say that there are many types of jinn. Some are spirits, some dogs and snakes, some with wings and fly, and others look human. They say jinn come in both male and female and emerge mainly at night. Aside from the classical conception of a genie, something else has worked its way into popular culture. The making of a wish after seeing a shooting star. Muslims say that when you see a shooting star, a jinn just got kicked out of the heavens and cast back to our earth. This is probably code for a streaking UFO. Everyone knows that genies grant wishes, so when you see a falling star, you've just seen a genie. So, you make a wish. Jinns, like the ancient ones from the Necronomicon, were created before mankind and filled the earth with corruption. Like the demons from the Necronomicon, they can be banished with incantations and made to do what is against their will. These beings can also survey the habitation of men without his knowing. And the Muslims also claim that there is a pact or contract between the jinn and mankind. Alhazred claims that some demons feed off human emotion like food and can actually become fat from death. Outside the limit of our sight, Feeding off us, perched on top of us from birth to death, are our owners, our owners. They have us, they control us, they are our masters. Wake up, 